I made another shell challenge for us in The Sims, and this time it's pretty painful, so I just want to apologize in advance. If you're not familiar with the concept, basically a shell challenge is when somebody builds a weird box in The Sims, they make a shell of a building, stick it on the gallery for you to download, and then you take that shell and try and turn it into something. Maybe a house, maybe a museum, maybe a, a park or something. And the idea is that we all have the same shell of the building, but everyone's build is gonna look completely different. So this is the shell that I built this time. Usually I don't do this, but I put a basement in this one. So it's technically three stories. It isn't like a huge house and it definitely has some really weird parts. I had a really hard time with this area in particular. Also, this part makes me want to cry. So thanks a lot, Simsy, for building that part. The rules are pretty simple. Basically just download this shell off my gallery. It's called the Dino Shell Challenge. Build it and then put it back on the gallery with the hashtag Simsy Dino when you're finished. This one is called Dino because I needed a new hashtag, but also because the first floor looks kind of like a dinosaur. Look at this. Hang on. We have little feet, a head, maybe a nose. It's it's kind of giving dinosaur, maybe like a little stegosaurus kind of thing. I don't know. That wasn't my intention, but it sort of worked out that way. So it's the dino shell. With a shell challenge, pretty much everything is fair game. And by that, I mean you can add platforms, you can add foundations, you can add roofs, you can add interior walls to make a floor plan. Obviously you can put stairs and wallpaper and furniture and you know, that's the whole idea is that you furnish this build. You can also rotate it and move it on the lot if you want to. You can put it on a bigger lot or a smaller lot, give it a foundation. You can change the wall height. The only thing that you can't do is adjust or move the existing walls. We always joke how the only rule is do not touch my walls, but by that I mean like you can't just get rid of this little piece if you want to because that's adjusting the shell. You also couldn't like add on to the building because that's kind of adjusting the shell. The whole idea of a shell challenge is that the shell remains the same, the shell being like all of the exterior walls. So they have to stay in the same place. You also couldn't add like a third floor because that's kind of like changing the shell. If you wanted, you could put like a greenhouse or a garage or something like off the shell, but you can't add anything that touches the shell. Does that make sense? So if you've got any questions, the answer is probably yes, as long as you're not altering the existing shell. Okay, the rules are simple. Do not touch my walls. And with that being said, I want to show you what I built with the shell challenge this time. So for mine, I chose to move all the way out to Henford on Bagley. I wanted to make like a sort of cottagey farmhouse sort of vibe, and I wanted to use cottage living. So I built this, I put a pond, we've got chickens, like it, it ends up being pretty cute. It's also really small and really tight on the inside, and I thought that doing like a sort of older British looking house might feel appropriate for that kind of floor plan. No offense, but you know what I mean with like the older tight floor plan. It kind of works. I made the front of the house be that piece that had the little rounded area, and I thought the front worked really well, but I did not like the back. The back was a huge headache. At first, I tried to use that little bump out to make a chimney. Now, I do that a lot in my build, so I should clarify what is and isn't against the rules, right? You can't add real walls to this, but you're allowed to use half walls. In my mind, half walls are kind of the same thing as fences, and you can put fences, so you're allowed to use half walls. So I was doing that by putting half walls on top of, like, the existing shell to try and make a chimney. And it kind of looked weird, so I ended up changing it, but I did still do the chimney thing. I just did it on the side of the house instead. So you'll see it kind of come together hopefully soon. But yes, you are allowed to use half walls. You just are not allowed to use regular walls. Because when you add a regular wall, you're making like a real room, and then adding that on like kind of changes the shell. But in my head, again, half walls are kind of like fences. So if you were to add like a fence around a balcony, that's fine. If you were to add a half wall around a balcony, that's fine too, you know? So that's kind of my thought process. But here's the thing with the rules and shell challenges, right? I'm gonna tour these. I'm gonna do a stream touring them, so if you want to watch that, I'll link my Twitch channel down below. It's just twitch.tv forward slash lilsimsy. I'm gonna do that stream in like a week. Uh, probably like next Friday, I think is my plan. I'll keep you updated on that though. And we're gonna do random tours that day. So basically I'm just gonna pick random names from chat and then tour their builds so that everyone kind of has an equal chance of me touring it on stream. And then I'm also gonna make a YouTube video touring them, and for those, I usually pick like the, the best ones that I can find. Best is all relative, you know, I, I try and pick like a, a wide wide variety of different things to show off, like some base game builds and some alien builds and you know, all kinds of random things, but I try and pick like 10 to 15 to show off in the video. And that is fun, I love the shell tours, but that isn't the whole point of the shell challenge. At the end of the day, I'm just not gonna see all of them. I, I hate to say it, but like the gallery doesn't work, it doesn't, it stops loading. There's gonna be thousands and thousands of entries probably, so while I try my best to scroll through and like filter it all differently to try and see a lot and comment on a lot of them, I just won't be able to see all of them. So if that 
that's like your only motivation for doing the shell is like the chance of me seeing it. I don't want you to be disappointed. Like I don't want to hurt anybody's feelings because I really do try to see them, but like you know how the gallery is. You try and scroll and it just stops loading at a certain point and like it's glitchy and there's gonna be so many. So I I will try, but I, I won't see them all. So if you're gonna be sad if I don't see yours, I maybe encourage you to not participate. The real fun of this challenge though is just like having an excuse to do a build together, right? Like it's not so much about me seeing your build and more about like giving you some inspiration for a new build, hopefully. I love shell challenges because it's so fun to see how everyone interprets it differently. Like I made this little cottage out of this build, but there's gonna be like modern museums and aquariums and Victorian style houses. Like there's gonna be so many different interesting interpretations and that is the most fun part of the whole challenge is just seeing how we all started with the same box and then made it into completely different things. That's what's fun about this to me. And so all of that to say, we have these rules for the shell challenge kind of to like give people an idea of where to start. But like if one of my stupid walls is ruining the challenge for you and you need to move one of them to make it fun, bestie, by all means, just move the wall. Who cares? You know, like <laughs> obviously for the official challenge, don't break the rules. But like if you want to do it for fun, break the rules. I don't care. Just maybe don't upload it to the gallery if you're gonna um, <laughs> change all of the walls or something, you know? Same thing goes for CC. Like, you can absolutely use custom content in this. The only thing is if I'm gonna tour it in the video or on stream, don't use CC because then I won't be able to see it or download it. I mean, I can filter by include CC, but like I, I don't have the same CC you do, so if I download it, it'll be empty. So I personally wouldn't use CC in this build, but like if you really like building with CC and it would be fun for you to do it with CC instead, by all means, use CC. You know, like that's the whole thing. It's This is more so for you to have fun. I make these shells because I like doing them and I know a lot of you like doing them too. So do what will be fun for you with the shell. That's the moral of the story. I want you to enjoy it. We've made a lot of progress on the exterior of the house though. So you'll see that I kind of went for like a blue color scheme. I know, Simsy and her blue Suburbans. This is different though, cause it's like a cottage and I was using a lot of doors and windows that had blue accents. So like think the blue shutters, the fences have some blue detail on them. There's a blue door. That's kind of what I was going for. And then I had like some, some sort of colorful landscaping to tie it all together. But I was just using blue as an accent color because I love, love, love those cottage living windows. The blue shutters are so cute. I think this house actually turned out being really adorable. There are definitely some parts of it that like I probably would change if I wasn't doing a dumb shell challenge. Like I really don't like the back of this house, even with all of the work that I've done. I end up changing it a lot from what it looks like right now. I put more of like a wraparound porch. And even with that, I still don't love how it looks. Uh, that's definitely not my first choice for the back of the build, but it's a shell challenge. So it's kind of different than a usual build, right? Like normally in a regular build, if you didn't like it, you would just change it. But in a shell challenge, you're kind of stuck with what you've got. So at least it's the back, right? You know, I don't have to worry about it too much because it's on the back of the house. So, you know, just don't look at it. Just pretend you do not see it. And then it's, it's easier. <laughs> but I think the wraparound porch part kind of helped make it look a little bit better. Although I still don't love the back. There's just something about like the weird legs of the dinosaur. That's the best way I can describe it. There's something about like those parts that really bug me for some reason. I, I don't know why, but I just, I don't like it. Whose dumb idea was it to make those? Me. It was me. I built this. I actually built the whole shell and my version of the shell on stream. I can link the video down below if you want to see the whole thing. I always upload my live streams to YouTube after I'm done streaming them and I can link that down below. I mean, it's like three and a half hours long, so <laughs> you don't have to watch it. But if you want to see like the live real time process of making this, I can link it for you. Actually, if you want to subscribe to that channel, I post all of my streams on a channel called More Simsy. And obviously I live stream live on Twitch. My name's just Lil Simsy there too. I'm sorry to plug it, but like I'm getting really close to 600,000 followers on Twitch. We're like 5,000 away. So if you want to pop in, if you want to follow us on Twitch, we hang out. It's fun. It's fun doing things like this live, especially because usually when I make the shell challenge, I'm building it, but then a lot of people are also watching and building at the same time. So we're all kind of like doing it together live. And that's just kind of fun. It's, it's kind of like a fun community building thing. We're all sort of just sitting there together, you know, complaining about my horrible shell, exchanging ideas. It's cute. It's kind of cute. I'm probably going to do another shell in May. So like in about a month, we'll do another one. I'm doing a big charity event for St. Jude in May. I always do this every year, every day, all of May, I stream for St. Jude. Last year we raised $320,000 for St. Jude and we're going to try and beat that this year. So we'll probably do a shell challenge again in May, kind of together as a group just for fun. So I'll, I'll give you like advanced notice on YouTube probably too, so you know to come by.
by if you want to watch that. I've also done a whole bunch of other shells in the past, so if for some reason you like love this and you really enjoyed this video and this challenge, I can link the other ones down below too, because just because like the shell is a few months old doesn't mean you can't do it still for fun, you know? If you just want to do some Sims build challenges, absolutely feel free. People ask me a lot like, hey Kayla, what do you do like when you're, you know, not feeling inspired by the Sims and like you want to have some more ideas? Challenges are a great way to do that, like if you want to play the Sims but you just don't know what you want to do, try and grab a challenge, maybe like a, a shell challenge to build or I don't know, maybe like one of the scenarios or something, those are always good ideas to give your brain some inspiration. But shells are fun for that too, because it kind of like forces you to think outside the box, right? Because you sort of, well, <laughs> think inside the box because you're stuck with a box that you have to think around, but it's kind of fun doing it that way. It's a really different way to build that isn't the way we all normally do. Anyway, the house is kind of coming along. You can see I have a bunch of porches and patio space. Off the kitchen, there's like a little private patio balcony, and I put like some rocking chairs and some lemonade. I ended up putting an easel, and also the kitchen is probably one of my favorite kitchens I have ever made. I'll have to show you like in a tour at the end a little bit more up close because it's kind of hard to see. I also cut out me doing the floor plan because oh my god, the floor plan on this house took me so long. It's like actually embarrassing. I, I had to redo it so many times. It's because doing stairs is probably the hardest part of shell challenges because it's really hard to find a space for them that actually makes sense. And there's obviously two floors that need to have stairs to them in this build because we have the downstairs and the upstairs. So the basement really threw me off. The basement was definitely the hardest part of this shell, I think. So I'm, I'm sorry for doing it. I've just never done a shell that has a basement before. So I thought it would be fun to put one in, but obviously the basement's kind of a weird shape and it's in a weird spot. So it's really, really hard to fix like a floor plan for the basement. It's just hard to get your sims down there. So I managed to sneak some stairs to the basement like behind the kitchen. And so there's like a little tiny hallway that sort of serves a purpose as like a laundry room, storage room. It has like a broom and stuff. And then you go downstairs from there. And also upstairs in this house, there is a living room, but it's kind of like a small cozy formal living room. And so it just has a fireplace and a couch. And then downstairs, I made more of like a den sort of space, like maybe where you would have the TV and like a games room. So I tried to make like the actual living room be downstairs in the basement. And I quite liked that idea. I think that's kind of common actually. I mean, I live in Florida, so we don't have basements. So I don't know what I would do with the basement personally, but like my grandparents, they have like a living room upstairs by the front door. Where they have like a couch and some chairs. And then downstairs in the basement, they have like the cozy stuff, like the TV and some like recliners and things. And they hang out down there most of the time. So I kind of tried to do that with this house. And I actually put like a foosball table down there. There's a bar and there's like a little sneaky cat space that I put as well, which I quite liked because there's like a weird part underneath the stairs. Because the floor plan is so weird of the basement, I kind of had this little two by one area I had to block off with the stairs. And I wanted to try and make that still usable. So I ended up putting like a little pet door under the stairs so your cats can get in there. And then there's like a little cat tree and a scratching post and stuff. So only your cats can get there and then your Sims can change their litter box underneath the stairs, but not like behind the stairs. Only the cats can get behind the stairs. Only the cats can get behind the stairs. I also made this little tiny office nook. It's only two by two. There's two really small rooms downstairs. There's a little office one and then a little tiny bathroom. These are in the feet of the dinosaur. I'm telling you, that was the dumbest idea I have ever had. I don't know why I did that. Why did I make them have those weird bump outs? Because it was so hard to do the floor plan for. But I think having a bathroom and like a little tiny desk space actually kind of makes sense. The other big issue I faced was the size of the bedrooms because they were all so tight. It was hard to fit a double bed in them. I really wanted to have like the room with the balcony be the main parents bedroom, but it was just such a weird shape because all the weird random walls, there wasn't a good spot to put a bed in without having like random things sticking out. And it just, it was a weird shape. So I ended up making the smaller room without the balcony, the parents room, and then the weirder shaped room with the balcony into a kid's room, which, you know, in real life is less than ideal. <laughs> you wouldn't really want like the best room to go to the kid probably but it just made the most sense for like what we needed to have. And there's a second bedroom downstairs that also has a double bed and I pictured like maybe the grandparents live there. So in this house, I was thinking it was like your parents, maybe like your grandma and then two kids could live here. I would actually love to play in this house. I think it is so beautiful. I love the yard outside too. It has this like wonderful windy stone path and, it's, and it has all these spots for farming and it has the chickens and the pond. It's just a really nice cozy area. I really enjoyed the outside of this build. I think this is probably 
probably one of my favorite shell builds that I've done. Like, of my own shell challenges, this one is probably, like, at the top of one of what I think is my best. <laughs> I've done some, like, kind of bad ones for shell challenges, I won't lie. Sometimes I, like, bulldoze it four or five times. It's so bad, but I'll be trying to do it, and I just can't get it to look good, so I have to keep starting over. I mean, if you've ever seen me do a shell challenge stream, you probably know that, like, it's really hard to get started. Once you get the floor plan figured out, it's fine, but it can be really hard to, like, get the exterior and the floor plan to, to work. And then once you get it going, it's, it's all good. It sort of falls into place. But the beginning, the beginning of a shell challenge is so hard. So if you struggle with that, if you're trying this, don't let it deter you. It'll be okay. This one's kind of tough, but the roof actually came together really easily for me. And oftentimes the roof is one of the hardest parts. So hopefully that is not too discouraging for you, but you know, it, it does depend on the style you're going for. I will say that I cannot do modern builds. A lot of people go like modern with shells. I think because it's easier to do like platform roofs because it kind of helps hide a lot of the weird parts of the wall. I am not good at modern builds. I never try that. And so that might be an easier thing for you to try if you want to give it a go. I love shell challenges. I keep saying that, but I, I like so look forward to seeing what you come up with. I just can't wait. I, I seriously love, love, love everything about shell challenges. They are so much fun for me. The shell tours are just so cool getting to do. I love seeing what everybody does and what all their inspiration was. It's cool because when you look at other people's builds that closely, you kind of learn things about the game that you didn't know before. For example, maybe like I just used a bed you had never seen before or a wallpaper you hadn't seen before. Maybe I tried a different landscaping technique that is new to you and you can kind of like take that on and learn from it. It's just fun. But with that, the build is pretty much done. Before I show you my finished version, here's what the original build looked like. Well, the original shell looked like. It wasn't quite a build. It was just a box. It had those weird bump outs. It had the basement that was very hard to work around. And this is what I made out of it. I am so proud of this build. I think it turned out so cute. So on the outside, you can see we have this adorable front porch. It's pretty big. There's like a chest table and some planter boxes. We've got the blue accents with the windows and also kind of the roof. There's a lot of little plant space around. Like we have some little garden areas sort of surrounding the whole lot. I also made this super cool like custom rock path to get to the back. And I think that fills up the yard really nicely. I also put in some bee houses. We have this really nice little pond, the chickens back here and some more plants in the front. I don't love the back, but the back also has some cute stuff going on. We have some more landscaping. I also tried to add in a lot of like fun gameplay items. Like this is a bird feeder. In game, it'll actually like have birds fly to it. Then we have like the rocking chairs, the lemonade, we have this little easel. I also love this little balcony up here. I just think that is so cute. I, I really, really enjoy the front of this house. I'm really proud of this chimney in particular. So you might remember this is that weird spot where there's like a little bump out or I guess bump in. I ended up using the piece to the right of it as a chimney. And this thing up here is just a half wall. I mean, granted, it's a very tall half wall, <laughs> but that's just a half wall up top to like make it look like a finished chimney. I didn't add any actual walls. I just used what we had and I think it looks pretty good. And then on the inside of the house, oh my goodness, the floor plan was such a nightmare, but here's what I did. So I have you walking into a fancy entryway and then from there, there's like a little hallway space where all the stairs and everything kind of connects. So these stairs go straight upstairs through the left door here. This is like that little tiny, like cozy living room space. There's a lot of windows in here. So it seemed really nice and like a good spot for this. And then we have like a little dining room area here. We also have the pet bowls and stuff, obviously. I had a really hard time with the floor plan of these little tiny rooms and like where to put the doors, but I thought that making like a little entrance hallway space here was actually quite a good way to do it. I just hate having the doors in the corner like this, but I think that kind of works. We have a little tiny bathroom here and then a little tiny office right here. In real life, this might not be the most useful space. Like it's kind of a shame how small it is. It'd be tight, but it also is nice to have like a private working area. So it might work out. Here is the kitchen. And I will say this is like one of my favorite kitchens I have done in a very long time. It's super small. It's kind of a weird layout, but I like that about it. It's just kind of quirky. And I, I think it turned out so cute. And then we have this little tiny door. This takes you into the hallway for the basement. So in this hallway, super weird shape, super weird shape but I managed to put some laundry and then also a staircase to the basement. So down there, we have that like proper living room area. I put a little bar back here. We have the foosball. I'm pretty sure your Sims can still use it just fine on both sides. And then we have like a cozy living room area down here. And then underneath the stairs, litter box and also cat room. <laughs> this is that room that was like gonna be nothing because the stairs were blocking it, but I tried to make it somewhat useful. It's a, it's a private bedroom for the cat. We also have like a little bedroom on the main floor that I figured was like for a grandparent or something, maybe a teen 
Dean could have it. If you wanted to play in the house, you could also like swap it and have this be the TV room and then maybe put like a gym downstairs or something. I don't know. That just made sense to me. And then upstairs, we managed to fit three bedrooms and a bathroom. So the hallway is actually quite small, but I think I made it work. I put a little bookshelf in where the chimney is. We have a huge bathroom upstairs, but I wanted to do this because it's kind of like the only main bathroom in the house. We have a toilet downstairs, but this has like a shower and a bathtub. So I like that it's big, even as a toddler potty. And then we have this little toddler bedroom right here. I try to use a lot of like fun wallpapers and stuff in this house. We have this super cute kids room that apparently my Sim is using the laptop in. I loved the like blue and purple color scheme in here. I think it kind of worked pretty well. They have a private balcony for some reason. And then we also have the parents room, which is really small. It's not that nice, but it works. <laughs> I wish it was bigger, but I just couldn't get the floor plan to function better. There's just not really a good spot for a double bed in here. It's too small. I guess you could always have like this bedroom be the parents room if you wanted to as well, but I don't know. It's not my best. If I were to do the house again, not a shell challenge, I would probably move the basement somehow or like adjust the basement so that I had more room to like move the stairs more easily. The stairs were definitely like the major limiting factor in this build for sure. There's just not a lot of places to put them, so it's hard to work around those. But that's the whole build. I got it on the gallery for you, and of course the shell is also on the gallery. I'll probably tour these in like a week and a half, two weeks, so you have a little bit of time to finish your builds. It's hashtag SimsyDino on the gallery, and I'll write those rules down below too so you can reference it more easily. And if you enjoy shells like this, I'll link some more right at the end of the video here. And with that being said, I'll catch you all tomorrow. Bye everybody. I am proud of myself because as of right now, I am officially pre-recorded for the weekend. I'm going to see my grandma for Easter, so I'm taking like three days off. And I've got all my videos done and ready to go for it. I've had a very busy week with like the green card interview and this, so I've just, I'm, I'm glad to take a break. <laughs>